Uh, just a short video on this old tuner. It's an AM only BJD made in Australia tuner, model RF3. Uh, I've actually got the insides of this loose at the moment. I thought I'd just have a quick look at it. Um, actually powered it up and it does seem to work. Even though I said the cords cut off it. The Nadia's from Hungry Day. This is the same night century arrived in Hungary on their horses, created what is modern day Hungary. work in some degree I mean I'm not sure that's a hundred percent but um, I don't really listen to AM now so I don't know how much of that interference should be there or well, that's the problem with it but it, um, like I said it's an AM only so it's not a lot, a lot of use got an old wooden back on it I've loosened the screws off and just had these cords hanging out the back which have been cut off so just a single mono uh, which may have shielded cable there which may have gone to a din or something may have been wired up for both channels and just a normal mains flex cable which like I say was cut off so I've just got a terminal block on there at the moment but basically once you pull the screws out of the bottom this wooden back comes out and the whole chassis should take the knobs off the front and the whole chassis should come out so that's basically a little Chassis like this, it is solid state, but I'm not sure it's got some of those little early round transistors similar to a TA92, but in a little sort of round case with a flat on it. So I'm not sure this would probably be late 60s, early 70s. It's actually got on the bottom here BJD Australia, etched into the board, hi fi tuner model, was it RF3? I said it is on the front here, RF3, yep. And then there's something there which looks like PDA or something. Can't quite make that out. So it's at least got a circuit board in it. Ah, I've got a few years. One, two, three incandescent lamps there. One under the meter. One each end of the dial. I think that is a plastic dial. It looks a bit like glass, but... It could be glass. It might actually be glass, I think. Yeah, it's glass, I think. And a couple of, well, tuning capacitor and tuning dial. One of the old school, not the largest one I've seen, but one of the older open sort of ones. Not the little modern tiny ones you get. And we've got a switch pot on the end here. That could almost even be made in Australia too, but it's a sonar, I think which may have been a made in Australia, yeah, Sonar CS Ost. So I think they were an Australian made pot. So the fact that it's an Australian made tuner is quite amazing. It's got a Selectronic Transformer. And one of these large little glue bits there failed, large ferrite rods. A few little IFs there. Actually, in the brass cases, by the look of it. And yeah, the resistors don't look overly old, but they are an earlier style. I mean, some of these electrodes could be starting to fail now, might be letting a bit of hum into the system. And I don't know if I can see what sort of transistors that is. Yeah, a bit hard to read in this light, and with them half hidden, I can't remember what these actual transistors used to have on them. I remember seeing them in the past and I probably used to save a few off old circuit boards and stuff but I don't know that they do have an actual number on them to be honest. If 
I thought they did have some sort of re uh, writing on them usually. But anyway, that's it. It's interesting little chassis. Interesting that it's AM only, but it's a hi-fi type tuner. Which I think that's what it actually said on the bottom, didn't it? Hi-fi tuner model RF3, so not very hi-fi if it's mono and AM only, but I guess back in the late 60s, early 70s, that was probably close to high fidelity back then. So it's got a few little little brackets hold the case together there. And you see a Perspex front on it. A couple of bits of aluminium. But I'll give that all a clean up anyway, so it looks a little bit better because other than having this sitting around lighting up and looking pretty, uh, not much else you can do with it. This case is in pretty poor condition, so it's really on sanding back and you can see the I think it does have a proper veneer on it at least. It's plywood on the bottom. It's all plywood, you can see the ends of it there. But it looks like it's actually got a, a real veneer on it rather than a plastic one. Yeah, it's that border or something, this is starting to peel a bit and this is pretty bad, but I might actually just sand that back lightly and give it a stain. Try and get it back to that original sort of colour, give it a bit more gloss and a bit of a darker colour, I think, and what it'll do as a display piece. And just a couple of old the old knobs with grub screws in them for these old D-shaped shafts. Well, that one's actually fully round, the tuning one, and the that's probably a, a bit made for them. Might have even been machined up in a machine shop or something, but it's one of those sort of shaft extension type. I think you used to be able to buy them at Dick Smith and stuff. Got that, yeah, the original tuning capacitor shaft would end there somewhere. And yeah, quite a long pot shaft. And yeah, a rather old little edge meter there. Tiny little thing it is. But I'll put that back together and, and use it as a display piece. And this is it back up and running. So there must be another light on that actual dial string I didn't notice. And I don't think there's an awful lot of backlight operation there. There is one. Oh, they are lit both end. Only just. Doesn't do an awful lot of a job of actually illuminating the dial. And you can see the tuning indicator bit light up there. Although that's partly probably coming from that panel meter. Yeah, the dial is lit up in there just, but at least the needle stands out nicely. Yeah, a bit of classic old gear. Definitely looks like it's an oldie, early 70s or something with a sort of finish like this has. All wooden kind of look. And yeah, sort of cheap perspex front and all the rest. But at least it was actually made back in Australia. Must have been one of the last things, last vestiges of the electronics industry in Australia as far as actual hi-fi type components and stuff go. So yeah, interesting old unit.